Use of personal protective equipment when caring for a person under investigation for Ebola virus disease in a First Nations or other community health facility. This training video is based on advice from the Public Health Agency of Canada's Infection Prevention and Control Expert Working Group. My colleague, Dr. David Patilla jones and I would like to tell you about this very important initiative to help keep our healthcare workers safe and ensure they are prepared for infectious disease threats, including Ebola or other hemorrhagic fevers. Health Canada is pleased to collaborate with the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada to bring you these training videos. They will show how to put on and take off the personal protective equipment needed when caring for patients suspected or confirmed to have Ebola virus disease in a First Nations community health setting. Training and repeated practice is necessary to ensure when personal protective equipment is used, it is done so in a correct and safe way. These videos are to be used along with the in-person training. These videos are an important part of infection prevention and control training, both now and in the future, to help refresh and maintain these essential skills on an ongoing basis. We recommend watching these videos regularly as a reminder of the important skills learned during in-person training. Our goal is to ensure healthcare workers and First Nations communities are prepared for any serious communicable disease event, including the Ebola virus disease. We hope you find these videos a valuable contribution towards our efforts to protect and be protected when dealing with potential risks. Recommended personal protective equipment, donning and doffing processes, where there is a higher risk of exposure to blood or other bodily fluids. Please note that the sequences for donning and doffing may vary according to the type of personal protective equipment in use at your health facility and based on the point of care risk assessment. A risk assessment approach should be used before and during every interaction with a patient under investigation for Ebola virus disease to support the use of additional infection prevention and control measures where indicated. This video segment demonstrates the donning sequence of personal protective equipment for higher risk of exposure to blood or other bodily fluids. The recommended personal protective equipment used in the following higher risk scenario, as per the point of care risk assessment, includes fluid resistant foot and leg coverings, a fluid resistant mask or respirator if performing an aerosol generating medical procedure, a fluid resistant head and neck covering, a fluid impermeable gown, a fluid impermeable apron, a face shield, and double gloves. Donning Step 1 Prepare for donning enhanced personal protective equipment in a designated clean area. You, the healthcare worker, together with the trained monitor, perform self care such as hydrating and going to the washroom. Remove all personal items such as stethoscope, cell phone, jewelry, identification tag, pens, and other items. Pull hair back and away from your face and neck and secure it in place. Ensure that your fingernails are trimmed to prevent tearing of gloves. Perform hand hygiene thoroughly and effectively using alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water if hands are visibly soiled. Note. The proper technique and complete hand hygiene procedure is being demonstrated in this step. Subsequent hand hygiene steps have been abbreviated. Ensure that you have all the personal protective equipment required. Inspect the personal protective equipment for defects and appropriate size. Your 
Most importantly, be attentive and careful and take your time in donning the personal protective equipment. Supporting you is a trained monitor whose role is to assist, assess, and document your appropriate selection, use, removal, and disposal of personal protective equipment. The trained monitor reads aloud all steps throughout the donning procedure and ensures all steps are performed properly. Step 2. Perform hand hygiene thoroughly and effectively as demonstrated in donning step 1. Use alcohol-based hand rub. Step 3. Put on fluid-resistant foot and leg coverings. If needed, sit down on a stool or other surface in the designated clean area. Ensure that your shoes are compatible with the coverings and allow for easy removal. The foot and leg coverings are long enough to cover your legs below the gown and fit securely to avoid the risk of tripping. Okay, that's great. Step four, perform hand hygiene thoroughly and effectively as demonstrated in donning step one. Step 5. Put on fluid-resistant mask if an aerosol-generating medical procedure is not being performed. Put behind your ears. Use three fingers. Mold the metal piece to the bridge of your nose with three fingers simultaneously on both sides. Ensure that your nose, mouth, and chin are fully covered with minimal gap between the mask and your face. If there is a gap between the mask and your face, make a knot in each ear loop to tighten it. Again, three Note that masks with attached visors are not suitable. Alternate step five. Put on respirator instead of a face mask if an aerosol generating medical procedure is being performed. Confirm that proper fit testing was completed as per your jurisdictions or organizations policies and procedures. Place elastic bands as per user instructions to hold the respirator in place. The train monitor can position the elastic bands properly to ensure a secure fit. Perform a seal check to assess adequate fit. Step six, put on fluid resistant head and neck covering. Ensure that the head and neck covering covers all of your hair and ears and extends past your neck and shoulders. Secure the ties at the back of your head. The train monitor can help fasten the ties at the back of your head. The train monitor verifies that the covering fits securely and comfortably around your face. Step 7. Put on inner gloves. Ensure that the gloves are durable and fit appropriately for the task. Examine the gloves for intactness 
and proper fit. Good. Step 8. Put on fluid impermeable gown. Ensure that the gown is cuffed and long enough to cover from your neck to below your foot and leg coverings, and also to your wrists, including sleeves. Fasten the gown securely at the neck and waist. If the gown has two sets of waist ties, tie the inner tie first, followed by the outer tie, with edges overlapping to completely cover your clothing, both front and back. The train monitor can help fasten the gown at your neck and waist to ensure that no clothing is visible. The trained monitor ensures that your inner gloves fit securely under the gown cuffs and that the ties of the head and neck covering are also under the gown. Step 9. Put on fluid impermeable apron. Don the apron to the front of your body for additional protection against exposure to patient blood or bodily fluids. The trained monitor ties the apron slightly adjacent to, but away from, the gown ties to ease doffing. Do not tie the apron at the front. Step 10. Put on face shield. Ensure that the face shield is long enough to prevent splashing underneath and that it fits over your prescription eyeglasses if wearing. Secure the strap at the back of your head. Adjust the face shield to ensure that no skin is exposed, as directed by the trained monitor. Note that eyeglasses are not suitable eye protection. Step 11. Put on outer gloves. Ensure that the gloves are durable and fit appropriately for the task. Fit them securely over your gown cuffs. The train monitor can help position the outer gloves over your gown cuffs. Examine the gloves for intactness and proper fit. The donning procedure for higher risk of exposure to blood or other bodily fluids is now complete. To ensure proper fit of personal protective equipment, perform a few range of motion exercises, such as looking up and down, bending forward at the waist, and extending arms above your head. The train monitor inspects front and back to ensure proper fit of personal protective equipment, that is, all skin and clothing are completely covered. You are now appropriately attired to provide care to a patient suspected or confirmed to have Ebola virus disease where there is a higher risk of exposure to blood or other bodily fluids. If at any point while providing care to the patient, you have any difficulties or unintended breaches with your personal protective equipment, such as fogging of the face shield or tearing of the gloves, or unprotected exposure to blood or other bodily fluids, you should stop providing patient care after ensuring the patient is safe, leave the patient room, and calmly and methodically remove your personal protective equipment. Then, as required, Follow your health facility's Ebola exposure management plan and put on a new set of personal protective equipment before continuing patient care. This video segment demonstrates the doffing sequence of personal protective equipment for higher risk of exposure to blood or other bodily fluids. Doffing Step 1. Prepare for doffing enhanced personal protective equipment in a designated soiled area located immediately outside the patient room. The trained monitor performs a point of care risk assessment and dons the personal protective equipment required ahead of time in order to safely assist you, the healthcare worker, as soon as provision of care is completed. After leaving the patient room, you step into and remain in the designated soiled area right outside the patient room to remove and immediately discard your personal protective equipment, including respirator, if used, 
into a designated sturdy, no-touch, leak-resistant biohazard waste receptacle located there. In the following demonstration, as the healthcare worker is visibly soiled, the point-of-care risk assessment indicates higher risk of exposure to the trained monitor. Therefore, the personal protective equipment used by the trained monitor mirrors that of the healthcare worker. The trained monitor remains in the designated clean area the entire time while helping the healthcare worker in the doffing process. The trained monitor reads aloud all steps throughout the doffing process and ensures that you are attentive, careful, and taking your time to reduce your risk of self-contamination. Inspect your personal protective equipment for visible contamination, cuts, or tears. Most importantly, be attentive and careful, and take your time in doffing your personal protective equipment to reduce the risk of self-contamination. Step 2. Remove outer gloves. Use glove-to-glove -glove technique to remove gloves away from your body, taking care not to contaminate inner gloves as follows. Grasp the outside edge near your wrist and peel it away, rolling the glove inside out. Then reach under the glove on your other hand and peel it away. Discard both gloves immediately into the designated waste receptacle. Step 3. Remove apron. Loop your thumbs onto the neck strap, being careful to minimize contact with your gown and not touch the head and neck covering. To reduce your risk of self-contamination, the train monitor then carefully cuts the neck strap at the back with disposable blunt scissors, discards the scissors into the designated sharps receptacle in the designated soiled area, and undoes the waist ties. You then pull the two fragments of the cut neck strap forward away from your body and remove the apron without contaminating yourself, rolling it from inside to outside. Discard the apron immediately into the waste receptacle. The trained monitor removes and immediately discards outer gloves into the same waste receptacle and puts on new gloves. Step 4. Remove gown. To reduce your risk of self-contamination, the trained monitor unties the outer waist tie to open your gown at the back and expose the inner tie. Then unties your inner tie at the back and unfastens your gown at the neck, gently pushing the gown off your shoulders, being careful not to touch the inside of your gown. You then reach under the gown cuff of one sleeve and gently slide it over your hand. With your hand covered by the gown cuff, pinch the gown cuff of your other sleeve to remove it. Pull and remove your gown without touching your skin or clothing or agitating the gown unnecessarily. Turn the gown inside out on itself and roll it up. Discard the gown immediately into the waste receptacle. The trained monitor removes and immediately discards outer gloves into the same waste receptacle and puts on new gloves. Step 5. Remove inner gloves. Use glove-to-glove, -glove, skin skin-to-skin technique to remove gloves away from your body as follows. Grasp the outside edge near your wrist and peel it away, rolling the glove inside out. Then reach under the glove on your other hand and peel it away. Discard both gloves immediately into the waist receptacle. Step 6. Perform hand hygiene thoroughly and effectively. Use alcohol-based hand rub. The trained monitor pumps it into your hands without touching you. Note, the proper technique and complete hand hygiene procedure is being demonstrated in this step. Subsequent hand hygiene steps have been abbreviated.
Step 7. Put on gloves. Examine the gloves for intactness and proper fit. Step 8. Remove face shield. Bending forward from the waist, grab the strap toward the back and pull it over your head, ensuring that the bottom of the face shield does not touch yourself. Gently allow the face shield to fall forward. Avoid touching the front of the face shield to prevent contaminating yourself. Discard the face shield immediately into the waist receptacle. If you wear prescription eyeglasses, be careful not to drop them when removing the face shield. Step 9. Remove gloves. Use glove-to-glove, skin-to-skin technique to remove gloves away from your body. Discard both gloves immediately into the waist receptacle. Step 10. Perform hand hygiene thoroughly and effectively, as demonstrated in doffing step 6. Step 11. Put on gloves. Examine the gloves for intactness and proper fit. Step 12. Remove head and neck covering. Unfasten the ties at the back of your head. Bend forward from the waist. Pinch the top of and gently pull the covering away from your face while holding the ties in the same hand. This is especially important if the ties hang past the bottom of the covering when undone. Discard the head and neck covering immediately into the waist receptacle. Remember not to touch your face or hair. Step 13. Remove gloves. Use glove-to-glove, skin-to-skin technique to remove gloves away from your body. Discard both gloves immediately into the waist receptacle. Step 14. Perform hand hygiene, thoroughly and effectively, as demonstrated in doffing step 6. Step 15. Put on gloves. Examine the gloves for intactness and proper fit. Step 16. Remove mask or respirator. Grasp the mask loops or respirator straps from behind your ears or head. Pull them forward off your head, bending forward from the waist to allow the mask or respirator to fall away from your face. Avoid touching the front of the mask or respirator to prevent contaminating yourself. Discard the mask or respirator immediately into the waist receptacle. If you wear prescription eyeglasses, be careful not to drop them when removing the mask or respirator. Step 17. Remove gloves. Use glove-to-glove, skin-to-skin technique to remove gloves away from your body. Discard both gloves immediately into the waist receptacle. Step 18. Perform hand hygiene thoroughly and effectively, as demonstrated in doffing Step 6. Step 19. Put on gloves. Examine the gloves for intactness and proper fit. Step 20. Remove foot and leg coverings. Sit down on a swivel stool or other wipeable surface in the designated soiled area. Roll down and pull off the covering of the leg closest to the designated clean area without contaminating yourself or agitating the covering unnecessarily. Slowly pivot the clean, uncovered foot into the adjacent designated clean area. Discard the foot and leg covering immediately into the waist receptacle. As just described, remove the other covering, slowly pivot the second foot into the designated clean area, and discard the foot and leg covering immediately into the waist receptacle. The train monitor can help you remove the leg and foot coverings if needed. Step 21. Remove gloves while seated.
Use glove to glove, skin to skin technique to remove gloves away from your body. Discard both gloves immediately into the waste receptacle. Step 22. Perform hand hygiene, thoroughly and effectively, as demonstrated in doffing step 6. Step 23. Exit designated soiled area. Remember to perform self-care as required. The trained monitor doffs personal protective equipment as appropriate and discards all materials contaminated or potentially contaminated during the doffing process into the waste receptacle. The doffing procedure for higher risk of exposure to blood or other bodily fluids is now complete. Hi, I'm Erin Henry, Director of the Communicable Disease Control Division in the First Nations and Inuit Health Branch of Health Canada. These videos were developed to complement comprehensive in-person training and practice sessions provided to healthcare professionals working in First Nations on-reserve health facilities across Canada. It is important to remember that in order for personal protective equipment to be effective, you must receive prior training in selecting and using the equipment based on the point of care risk assessment. This includes using and practicing the correct techniques for donning and doffing, discarding into designated waste containers, and effective hand washing to minimize the risk of transmission. The information presented in the videos is based on currently available scientific evidence and may be reviewed and revised as new information becomes available. What is key is that all techniques shown are based on infection prevention and control principles and precautions to guide you in protecting yourself, your patients, colleagues, and others. For further information, please visit canada.ca slash Ebola virus and royalcollege.ca slash Ebola. This video is made possible by a joint collaboration between Health Canada, the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada, the Public Health Agency of Canada, and IPAC Canada.